Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Eric Eugene Washington? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Eric Eugene Washington lived in Houston, Texas. In February of 2013, he was involved in a robbery that caused the death of a 62-year-old cell phone store owner in Harris County. The owner was shot in the back during the robbery, but Eric was not the actual shooter. In 2015, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison for aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. Eric was released in 2021. In December of 2022, he allegedly shoved and scratched his girlfriend during a domestic violence incident. He was charged with misdemeanor family violence and released on a personal recognizance bond. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On January 5, 2023, just before 11.30 p.m., about 10 people were at the Ranchito No. 4 restaurant on South Gessner Road in Houston, Texas. 30-year-old Eric Eugene Washington entered the Mexican restaurant wearing a ski mask and gloves and carrying a fake pistol in his left hand. The fake pistol looked as though it was real. Eric pointed the fake pistol at customers and demanded money. The robbery was captured on video surveillance. He walked around the establishment collecting money from the customers as he continued to threaten them with the fake weapon. One customer seated near the door could be seen in the top left corner of the video with his hands up. Two other customers were seated at a table in the middle of the row. They were on the floor. A man in the top corner of the video appeared to be surprisingly calm. One of the customers seated on the left side of the restaurant was a 46-year-old man who I will refer to as John Doe. He was seated with a friend of his when Eric started the robbery. John Doe could be seen on the surveillance video paying particularly close attention to Eric's movements and repositioning himself in a seat. John Doe was legally carrying a concealed semi-automatic pistol. Since 2021, no permit has been required to carry a gun in Texas. Generally speaking, a person in Texas can carry a gun wherever guns are not prohibited. As Eric continued to terrorize the restaurant customers and steal their money, he ended up walking toward the door of the restaurant. He still had the fake pistol in his left hand, and he was still pointing the fake pistol. At this moment, John Doe stood up from the table where he was sitting and produced his semi-automatic pistol. Unlike the pistol that Eric was carrying, the one that John Doe had was real. John Doe pointed the pistol at Eric and fired four shots in quick succession. Eric fell to the floor and landed right by the front door of the restaurant. John Doe then fired four more shots at Eric. After grabbing the fake pistol, John Doe fired one more time. He had fired his weapon nine times in total. With the lethal threat now neutralized, John Doe invited the restaurant patrons to collect the money that Eric had stolen. As John Doe was standing near the table where he had been seated, he appeared to realize that the pistol Eric had was fake. John Doe threw the fake pistol across the restaurant in apparent frustration. The employees remained at the restaurant. All the patrons, including John Doe, left the restaurant without waiting for the police. John Doe took one last drink from his cup before heading out to his pickup truck and driving away. When the police arrived, they found that Eric Washington was dead. The day after the shooting, the police released images of John Doe, which had been captured on the restaurant surveillance camera. They were able to identify him. John Doe secured the services of an attorney and supplied a statement to the police. Law enforcement never indicated their opinion about whether the shooting was justified or not. The case was sent to a grand jury to decide if charges should be filed against John Doe. On January 3, 2024, two days short of one year after the shooting, a grand jury declined to file charges against John Doe. John Doe's attorney indicated that John Doe remains traumatized. He said, quote, taking a human life is something he does not take lightly and will burden him for the rest of his life, unquote. His attorney also noted that John Doe was extremely relieved 
by the grand jury's decision. Now moving to my analysis. This case is highly controversial. Many people look at the actions of John Doe and believe that he was fully justified in defending himself and the other patrons in the restaurant. Other people believe that the grand jury's decision paves the way for Texas to become the Wild West. Most of John Doe's detractors agree that he was justified in shooting Eric Washington to death, but they think that John Doe fired too many times. They feel as though John Doe's behavior was overkill and just plain impolite. This brings me to the question, did John Doe commit any type of criminal offense during his shooting of Eric Washington? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that John Doe committed an offense, starting with the inculpatory factors. Eric Washington was not carrying a firearm. The police said that it was some type of airsoft or BB pistol. Eric was walking in the direction of the exit when he was shot. John Doe fired at Eric Washington nine times, four times as soon as Eric walked past him, four times after Eric hit the ground, and a single shot after taking possession of Eric's fake pistol. The last five shots were probably unnecessary to neutralize the threat, but there is almost no question that the last shot was unnecessary. John Doe left the scene without speaking to the police. Moving to the exculpatory factors, it was not John Doe's responsibility to determine if Eric Washington's firearm was real or not. The fake pistol looked real, and Eric was threatening people's lives with it. Eric was in the commission of a violent felony when he was shot and killed by John Doe. Even though Eric was walking toward the door when he was shot, he still had his left arm out and was holding the fake pistol. It does not appear as though he was done with the robbery. Even if the robbery was complete, Eric continued to represent a threat to the people in the restaurant and to anyone in the area. John Doe had the right to use lethal force when he fired his weapon at Eric Washington. This includes the right to shoot Eric in the back because Eric was still a threat. By shooting Eric in the back and catching him by surprise, John Doe protected himself and the other restaurant patrons. John Doe fired his weapon more times than he should have, but there is a reasonable explanation for his behavior. He was extremely frightened of Eric Washington. He had to build up the courage and the strength to take the initiative and use lethal force. John Doe would have been strongly affected by adrenaline. When he started to engage Eric Washington, John Doe probably wanted to make sure that the threat was completely neutralized. He overreacted slightly, but this overreaction was Eric's fault. It was Eric Washington who put lives in danger, not John Doe. Even after John Doe seized Eric's fake pistol, Eric could have still technically represented a threat. For all John Doe knew, Eric could have had another weapon concealed. As far as John Doe leaving the scene without speaking to the police, he was under no obligation to remain at the restaurant. When considering all the factors in this case, do I think that John Doe committed any crime? No. John Doe acted in self-defense. I agree that he overreacted a little bit, but that does not push his behavior into the realm of the criminal. He was simply responding to the physiological reality of dealing with a lethal threat. He acted like a human being under extreme stress would be expected to act. John Doe had less than a second to make a life-changing decision. The rest of the world has years to analyze the circumstances that led to that decision. In my opinion, John Doe not only acted in self-defense, he was a hero. When Eric Washington stuck his fake pistol in people's faces and demanded money, he was taking the chance that a courageous citizen would stand up to him. As it turns out, one did, and Eric lost. The community activists who criticized John Doe's final five shots, or even just his last shot, falsely claimed that his behavior could turn Texas into the Wild West. I think one could make a better argument that failing to stop criminals leads to the Wild West. Some of these activists are so against the right of self-defense, they look for any detail to criticize. They forget to weigh the mistakes of Eric Washington against the alleged mistakes of John Doe. Eric Washington committed a violent felony and jeopardized the lives of several people. John Doe may have fired his gun too many times while neutralizing the threat caused by Eric Washington. There is no comparison. Eric was overwhelmingly in the wrong. Some activists believe that offenders like Eric Washington are simply angels that became lost when they were looking for their wings, rather than armed robbers who had no remorse about victimizing innocent people. 
They believe that people should simply engage offenders like Eric with words and persuade them to abandon a life of crime. I imagine the activists would have felt differently if they were among those stuck in the restaurant. Now moving to my final thoughts. Several hours before the shooting, Eric Washington told his mother he was trying to be the best person he could be. Perhaps he should have tried harder, like he could have selected a method that did not involve armed robbery. In one sense, John Doe was the final victim of Eric Washington. John Doe will have to forever live with the knowledge that he killed a man. The fact that the shooting was justified probably offers little comfort. Those are my thoughts in the case of Eric Eugene Washington. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.